Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, so yes, uh, today I want to um, tell a bit of a story of how uh, we build business dashboards for, for a product. Uh, I am indeed the creator of Bonobo, but I won't talk just about Bonobo. I will uh, show different tools. Uh, so yeah, it's using Bonobo, Airflow, and Grafana all together to build really quickly some business dashboard. Um, before we start, so I'm Roman Dorgueil. I'm uh, making computer-related stuff since quite, quite a long time now. And this year, my focus is I decided to change uh, quite a bit what I'm doing, and I'm building a new company called Maker Squad. And my goal is to build cloud-native uh, products, mostly SaaS products, uh, using containers and stuff like this uh, for either myself and uh, live on, on subscription and or either clients and uh, and yeah, just uh, help them achieve this uh, this cloud native stuff which is not really natural for a lot so there is a lot of stuff today I'm sorry if I'm going too fast uh, sometime but I will give you a, a sidekick uh, link after with all the all the code and everything uh, the idea is I will introduce the product uh, so you you know what we're talking about it's a bit of background context then we'll see how to plan what we want to dashboardize. Uh, and we'll go into the technical part, which is implementing the data pipelines using Bonobo, visualizing it uh, using Grafana, and running seriously in production uh, with Airflow. And a bit of uh, where, where to go from there after that, but yeah, that, that will be it. So it has been said, but I created Bonobo, so, so I'm a bit biased here. Uh, I'm sorry about that, I'll try to be objective, but make your own opinion if you're building a product, if you're building anything, make your own research, take a lot, lot of time in planning, it's very important. And yeah, I recommend nothing, but maybe it's an idea you could try to apply to your, your own products and business. So, uh, the product, uh, it's a pretty simple thing. It's something that you give a URL a size and it returns an image. Um, it was, in fact, a, a service that a friend of mine uh, developed a long time ago, like 10 years ago, an infinite amount of time in the internet age. Uh, and it was looking like this in January. And if we time delta years nine, I added a parameter to time delta here. Uh, we come to February where, where I decided that it was not making money, it was using a lot of time, wasting a lot of time, and it was time to shut down the service. And at this time, I called him, and we agreed on me taking over the service with a brand new uh, thing. And so in March, he started to send me his traffic, and I didn't think it, he had this many traffic, so I started serving gateway timeouts. But after a bit of work, a lot of work, actually, uh, I could serve the new version of the, of the website, with, which was no PHP anymore, all Python, uh, and you, you'll see after how it worked. A uh, few months after, I started to measure everything technical. Uh, it's the background to be able to measure business things after. And in July, uh, also known as last week, uh, literally, we launched the private beta uh, and started to re-onboard all the all users there was. Uh, yeah. So things did not go exactly as expected, but uh, I'm pretty happy it was a nice problem to have, too much traffic. Uh, actually, when I measured the thing, I, I could say it was around one million uh, images served by, by day, which is not a lot if you're Google, but which is a lot if you just have a few servers somewhere. Um, and yeah, so nice problem to have. So, um, just so you understand how it works, that's basically the world service, at, at least the world um, user-facing service. And it's pretty standard on the, on the website. It's, there is a load balancer that sends traffic both to a Django website, which is the, to, the marketing website, and the user accounts, uh, manage the API keys, the billing, all stuff like this and sends also the traffic to the API server if it's an API query, which is written using Tornado. Uh, not really modern, not really sexy, but it, it's really fast and it really works well for us. 
Um, this, this API server basically just have to serve images as fast as it, as it can. Um, whenever an image is not here, uh, which happens quite often, it, it sends a miss event to an, a message queue, a, a RabbitMQ message queue. Uh, another service called Genito picks it up, decide, update the status first, decide whether or not this request is legit, is this domain not flooded, is this is this some kind of abuse, etc.? And if it decides it's legit, it sends a crawl message to another message queue. A spider picks it up, open the image, uh, save, uh, make a screenshot, resize it, compress it, blah blah, uploads it, uh, and at the end it sends either a created or failed message to the events message queue, uh, which will be which will be picked up by the janitor once again, and the janitor will update in Redis so the API server can serve the request next time an user asks for it. <laughs> Basically, that's. All the service is what I said. But to manage that, we also have a lot of data producing services in the back end. Um, I won't detail all of those services, but mostly we have Prometheus, which is a timestamp oriented database that crawls metrics from services and stores them into a, um, a bundled timestamp database, a TSDB, and also provide a query language that amongst other, Grafana can um, ask, uh, can, can query and get metrics from, so build graphs from that. Uh, and as it's a REST API, like HTTP API, you can also uh, just query it yourself and we'll use it to get some data. And very important too, we have external services, uh, which is pretty much services you know, Google Analytics, Stripe, Mailgun, etc. And that's interesting because there is a lot of data produced here too, and mostly the, the most interesting insight we can get, even if it's not not any, anywhere near big data, if it's small data, but uh, the, the, the biggest insight we can get is when we cross the data from internal things with external things. Uh, so at this point, I already have uh, dashboards of technical metrics, and I insist on this technical world because it's not what we want to do after. But we already have those dashboards made in Grafana. It's really easy to, to build. You just write a query, and you have the graph. It's uh, very quick to do. Uh, we have this CPU, memory, network, like standard monitoring thing. And we also have also standard monitoring thing, but more um, related to one service, like Nginx is returning uh, the, well, the, the amount of uh, 200, 300, 400, 500 we have per second written by Nginx, the timing of request, so we can know whether or not things are going nicely. Um, and I insist once again on the fact it's technical metrics because there's a lot of data every 15 seconds, Prometheus scrolls every, everything and, and, and stores new data. But we don't want to store forever this data because we can't make decisions based on that. It's just data that helps us um, restore the service whenever an incident um, arises or just react to what's happening. It's, it's good to know what's currently happening in the service. But it's good to know we have that before we do more. Uh, also, planning for how many water you drink in a conference is very important. So, the plan is basically based on, based on that. If you can't measure something, it's really hard to improve it. You're just blind, blindly running in, in a thing. And as it's very negative, I, I like better the, the other version, which says, what gets measured gets improved. It's not as easy as that, because there is metrics that you can look at after as much as you want, and it's just um, a consequence, an effect, so you, you can try to improve it, but if you don't fix the cause, it won't. But if you choose your metrics wisely, choosing cause metrics, uh, really having a focus on, yeah, that's, that's our goal, that's our team goal, or that's my goal, uh, will really help you improve that. And of course, there's not one answer to this question. Uh, the answer, which is not an answer, is that you should not focus on vanity metrics. For example, sooner I said uh, there is one million requests on the API per day. That's a perfect example of, example of a vanity metric. Uh, it's good to say, yeah, we have some traffic. It's good to say to your user, we're, we're, not, mm, we're not a tiny service. But uh, if you focus on that, it will just waste your time because I could serve one billion requests. It would be just costs. Uh, if, none of those requests are actually built, it, it doesn't mean a thing. 
Um, so to, to plan the metrics we want to, to, to measure, uh, it's important to consider the business you are in, like we are in, in software as a service, but there is different metrics for different kind of business. I will give you some pointers to, to find the, 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 state, the state of the art in, in, this, in, in this regard after that. Uh, it's also important to not look at the same thing if you're uh, like early stage business, pre-revenue, pre-market fit, pre-product market fit, or if you're in a late stage business, you won't look at the same kind of thing. And hopefully a lot of people, really smart people, built uh, frameworks for that, and that's, I'm speaking about business frameworks and, and not technical frameworks, but one you may have heard about is uh, the well-known ARCH uh, framework, also called the uh, I don't know if I say that correctly. Uh, also called the Pirate Matrix uh, Framework, which says, okay, users are complicated and we will segment the, 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 the user journey uh, within our service into five uh, kind of steps uh, mapped to the, when we attract new users, when we get them to um, give, give us a little something, like uh, when we activate them, for example, it could be they leave the email, that could be they create an account, then, but that could also be they give you a phone call, or may maybe they download your application if you're on a mobile app. Then you have the retention phase where you, you say, okay, that's good, you, you, I know who you are, but now I, I need to have you really uh, come and come again, need me every day, or every period of time you, you defined. Uh, I reverse the, the two ending, I, I didn't do it on the slide, but the, then you have the revenue, how do you get money from, the, uh, from this user? And, and that's not necessarily uh, he pays directly, it can, he can generate money indirectly also. And you have the referral phase that I put really at the end because um, in fact for a user to recommend your service, he must be like deeply in love with your service and he, he must love your service so much that he's willing to actually risk something of his social existence to recommend to his friend. So for example, uh, to, to explain that, uh, people recommend Slack because they think Slack makes them like, look cool. Uh, but if you're a parasite or some strange service somewhere, uh, people don't think for now that you're cool. So you can try to make referrals, but that won't happen at this stage. Uh, another way to present the same thing is the Ashmoya version. Uh, you, you, will, you, you will have all that after. Um, and if you want, if this is not enough, there is uh, people like Alistair Kroll and Benjamin Yuskovitz that works uh, in their book Lean Analytics on much more detailed version of the same thing. Actually, it's the same thing. Uh, you can look for the different uh, RR, a, a, R, R, R phase on this, but they are all here. Uh, but then it's much more finely grained and you can find, it's fine tuning, it's, it's optimization. It's, so as it's optimization, it's for later and for today. The plan is to focus on the activation phase, like let's say acquisition to activation phase, uh, and we'll just use R, oh, that's enough. So to summarize uh, what business software as a service, it's stage like they define in, in Lean Analytics, which is very early stage. We need to know if the, if the, 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 the people have, because we have users, but we need to convert them to members. So do we have enough, do we trigger enough emotion to uh, make them want to become members? And do we trigger enough uh, need answers that uh, actually they, they stick to the service and come back and use it and use the AP carriage. So for now, because I don't have a lot of time, uh, we will focus on rate from acquisition to activation and quality of service, both because we want to measure it to improve it and both because it's the main uh, testimonial we can have if we are transparent on our, our quality of service to users, they may think we are actually serious uh, on how we're doing it. So first of, the th first of the three technical steps is actually using Bonobo to implement some data pipelines uh, to integrate data in some metric database. Very simple, we get some data, 
we aggregate it, eventually normalize it, and we put that in a metric, metric value database, most probably timestamped. So I thought about the most simple model I could find about that, and actually it looks like this. It's metrics, and hourly values, daily values. Uh, that's very quick to write, uh, probably not the best, but it works for this stage, and it's important to, to note that uh, the technical metrics yield a lot of data. Those metrics will yield not a lot. If we have one data point per metric per hour, it's 24 data points per day, uh, it's really not a lot. So uh, that will be enough if you need to build a much bigger system. Of course, there is star and snowflake schemas. You can find a lot of literature on the internet. Uh, and yeah, so just a quick introduction because I guess you may not know Bonobo as it's a really young project, two, uh, less than two years old now. But Bonobo is an extract transform load framework. The, the goal of this is uh, you build uh, assembly lines of data transformations with independent stages and you will pass rows of data from one stage to another. So less uh, metaphorically, you will use Okay, it's, it's fitting. Uh, you will use different codables and iterators and, and classes instances to get some data. And here we are selecting some data from the database, we're qualifying it, we're joining to other database and sending emails. And the, the, the point is the, the send email function will run while the select function is still yielding results. So the first report will be sent and maybe select as still one million row to, to select. Uh, each runs in independent thread. Data is passed first in, first out. It's kind of kind of stupid. Um, it's of course I, I've, my example was linear, but it supports any kind of directed acyclic graphs, and we'll see that after in our imports. And um, it's standard Python, so you can use it in Bonobo or outside Bonobo. The same code. That's pretty neat. And uh, getting started is three lines, and if I had a long sentence, you could have done it before I finish. So, let's write our jobs. Once again, apologies if the code is, uh, if I'm going too fast for the code, it's why I put up an URL, I will upload the code and then notify as soon as it's done uh, at the end, but first extractor looks like this. Uh, it's an object count reader. So this object count reader um, builds a, a SQL query, which is rather simple. It counts objects in a table and formats that as a tuple of a dictionary of um, dimensions and dictionary of metrics. Uh, of course, the, the query is param parameterized, uh, so the, the percent zero uh, needs to be filled, and for that, we'll uh, simply use a, a dictionary that is a dictionary of uh, table to metric name, and we'll create uh, an iterator using the items, the, the dict.items uh, built in, uh, that will pass data uh, first in, first out to object count reader that will then uh, send the request to the database and etc. We'll see more when we aggregate all the things. The normalize is not a, a, a real normalization or there is no validation here, but it will do the job for the proof of concept. Uh, we will just say, okay, whatever comes here is, uh, I, I need two fields, and first one is called dims, second one is called metrics. We don't validate anything, but it's really easy then to replace this simple uh, stupid thing with a real schema validation of whatever is inside if you need to, to be more solid. We need something that writes to the metrics database, so uh, I wrote one that um, can write both to the hourly values and, 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 uh, and daily values tables. Uh, it filters out the, the rows it doesn't need, and then it, it's not really imp important to, to get the details of that, but uh, simply it will be called on each, each dimension metric tuple, and it, it will put it in the, into the database. And of course, we need to compose all that, which is probably the most important part. So we instantiate our normalized thing at the top. We create a graph instance that get the readers we had before, so the dict items and the object count reader. Then we normalize it, just the instance above. 
And we had two chains uh, with two instances of analytics writer, which uh, will filter out non-hourly metrics uh, and insert the hourly metrics in the database, and the other one will filter, filter out hourly metrics and insert uh, daily metrics into the database. Uh, because it's better when we visualize it, I skip a, a slide, and that will do that. So it will be passed first in, first out between all, and after the set field, uh, the, the data will be passed both to a daily analytics writer and both and to early analytics writer, and it's their role to filter out the, the, the rows they doesn't want. Uh, just before we pass the database connection implementation, so it's uh, SQL Alchemy databases in engine, oh, sorry. Uh, but yeah, not, of course, you need to connect. You can run it, uh, you will have a linear status, but it's not linear. Okay, we got it. Uh, let's add a lot of readers. Again, I'm running quick, but you, you, you'll get all that. We connect to Google Analytics, so we provide a service. We call Google Analytics, so of course we will provide a, a client uh, implementation uh, in the services dictionary, but here, same ID. We send a query to an API, and we yield a tuple of two dictionaries, dimensions, metrics. We can call Prometheus. You do not have to know what's the API of Prometheus, but you have a query range endpoint. We query this thing. We ask for some metrics. And the one we, we need, we often it's an, aggre it's a, an aggregate query. So we just uh, take hourly averages or things like this. And again, we yield uh, two dictionaries, dimensions, metrics. We have a spider count, so we have a lot of spiders running. Some are inactive, some are active, so we get all this thing. And we'll use a, a, a concept similar to functools.reduce in Python, but adapted to the st stream processing thing. And we'll use, so we'll use a reducer that will um, take elements two by two and just make one. Uh, so we take the sp spider statuses and we make a dictionary of counts of active and inactive spiders. Uh, which looks like this, so the, you need to initialize, to give an initializer to the, to the register thing, and a function to reduce. So everything that goes out of spider's reader, the status of spiders, uh, goes into this reducer two by two, and as soon as it's available, it's yielded, and we use a lambda here to just format to the dictionary of dimension, dictionary of metrics. I hope I didn't lose you completely. Uh, that's my biggest fear here, but the result graphically looks like this if we uh, put all the readers uh, at the same time in the same graph. And this graph can be executed. Uh, you don't have to execute everything at the same time, but this graph can be executed and we have some kind of bigger status. Uh, if someone knows how to write ASCII art trees in, in console, I really love to discuss the algorithm because for now I can't. Um, again, I'm biased, but it's really easy to replace parts, and that's uh, that's that's really what uh, what I like most is that, for example, the normalizer is still this set field thing. Uh, tomorrow, I will use maybe something like Cerberus or any schema validation library to to be sure that my uh, my data is is at, in the right format. Enough talking about Bonobo. Um, we need to visualize things, and we already have a Grafana instance installed, so it will be quite easy to just take some of those metrics and make graphs with that. So I guess, who doesn't know Grafana at all? Okay, so um, Grafana is quite an old software. I think it was a fork of um, another suite like this uh, before. And the goal is to connect data sources and to graphically configure graphs by making queries. So the interface to configure a graph looks like this. You just have a query editor, you put the query, and you get the graph. That's pretty much as simple as that. Of course, if you don't have data, you can't visualize anything. But uh, all, all the configuration is done uh, in the web interface. And so, for example, this graph is one of those we use for the uh, QoS thing, uh, which shows 
how many events we got every hour, about um, how many miss we, we got, how many created events we got, how many failed events we got. So we can compute ratio between um, created, failed, for example, uh, et cetera. We have also the, the one that passed through the reducer thing is the number of spiders. So when we launch more, we see the number of inactive spiders, active spiders. We, can work, we could work on better display here because it's what means inactive. Maybe it's just resting. So anyway, um, but much more readable for users. We have this um, graph of how many time does it take to get a new picture. And at the time I, I, I took this graph, on average it was 16 seconds. Uh, if probably you don't have all this advertising things, JavaScript thing that make the, 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 the browser load very long. Uh, maybe you were in the nine seconds range, which is the minimum we got here. But yeah. Uh, so we use that also to the same kind of source to, to build our public dashboards. Here the, the front end is something based on C3. Um, and that's just a parenthesis, not very important. But that's how we show to users uh, the actual status. But interesting also is that as you can write SQL queries directly in Grafana, you can, um, uh, sorry, you, you can actually make computation directly using your database engine. engine. So uh, here we had user accounts, we had new sessions from analytics, so user accounts coming from the count of objects uh, that we computed every hour before, new sessions that coming from Google Analytics API, API calls, and you can, just divide uh, one by the other, like subtract the maximum on a day with the minimum on a day of uh, number of users, then make a simple division and get the conversion rate be uh, between acquisition and activation. Um, here it's a bit strange because the, we have, a, I said that's actually real data, and we have like a 25% uh, uh, conversion rate at the beginning. Uh, so you have to cross us also with events because it's the day when you, we uh, mailed every people that said, hey, I want an account. Uh, we sent the, the mails this day. So of course, the, this kind of acquisition rate is not possible normally, uh, unless all your traffic actually already said they wanted an account. That's very early, as you've seen in the uh, in the timeline I shown at the beginning, uh, that's the affair of the last month and last weeks of, uh, of work. But yeah, that's, uh, that's our basis for, the, for seeing a lot more things. And we really want to base our decisions on data, so that's the, the basis to make the service evolve. So. Um, until then, that's pretty good. It runs on my computer, it runs on the production servers. But um, this iteration zero, let's say, um, is, yeah, it, it needed to work real quick. So a cron job was running everything uh, every 30 minutes. Uh, when something fails, actually we could know if something fails because it was Kubernetes cron jobs, but uh, it's, you, need to, you need to have a look, maybe, uh, if you have a lot of jobs that fail, you don't know which one failed. Uh, some expensive tasks were running every 30 minutes. It was hard to run manually, so because you have to export the current job into a job, reschedule that into the into the scheduler, and then eventually delete the job afterwards. So, a lot of things, and we wanted to do uh, to do better on this side. So uh, my cat uh, gently proposed to handle that. I declined the proposal. And um, we installed Airflow uh, to manage that. So as you may know, Airflow is a platform to programmatically author, schedule, and monitor workflows that the official docs. Uh, and I think it's uh, pretty pre precise. Uh, and we mostly use it to schedule and monitor here. Uh, once again, who doesn't know Airflow at all? Okay. Um, so it's a project that was created a few years ago by Airbnb. Uh, it's now an, a project under the Apache incubation program. So that's a really great news for the future of this. And the, the role is to schedule and monitor jobs, either with 
like if I run it on my computer, it will just schedule jobs on my computer directly. Or if you're running on a cluster, uh, for example, Kubernetes, but other kind of cluster can work too. You can distribute workloads using Celery Dask, or even they are working on a Kubernetes executor, so soon it, it could even uh, submit Kubernetes workloads directly. And it can run pretty much anything a computer can run, uh, Python being a special case of anything uh, a computer can run, but it can run anything. And it's written in Python, so the configuration is actually Python code. Um, without too much details, the architecture of Airflow, which is important to, well, if you want to run Airflow, you need to understand a bit the architecture because otherwise it will be a hell to, to run. But there is a web interface, I will show just after, that helps you um, updating the metadata database. And there is a scheduler service that reads the metadata, metadata database. Metadata is hard to say. Uh, with that and just say, oh, but hey, I have a, a task to schedule, so let me find a worker that has, okay, you can run it. So it sends the workload to worker, get the results, get the log file, and update the metadata with that. Uh, for us, it looks like this. So we, all the tasks we configured before, we defined it as DAGs, or um, the Directed Acyclic Graphs, which is the name of the task in, in Airflow. Uh, and my timer shut down, okay. okay. Uh, which is, so a task in Airflow, and here we could separate, um, for example, the cleanup task at, at the very top uh, is only run daily because it deletes a bunch of rows in database, no need to run it every hour, and all the rest is run hourly. Uh, which is, what is great is that you can uh, get the log files of one individual task, you can get, uh, you, you can get all, the, all the runs, you can run one manually, you can know the timings of different individual tasks, so as we plan to add m much more, it's great to have. And we also plan to have dependencies between tasks because the main goal of Airflow is also to say, okay, I need to run the five tasks here and once all the other all are done, let's run this thing and then, then, uh, then send a report. Bonobo would do on one data set, uh, first in, first out, at the row level, Airflow does that at, at the job level. And that's something you find in, uh, I mean, uh, legacy ETLs like uh, Talon, uh, Pantao, things like this. You, you often can manage the workflow between jobs and between tasks. Here we use two different tools. Uh, real quick, the configuration, uh, so you build DAG objects, uh, here we build s s um, simple DAG object with just one operator which runs um, um, Python code in another virtual environment. Uh, we build a lot of DAGs uh, using this function dynamically, so for each um, metric, each data source, um, uh, we build one DAG. And we build at the end the clean all, which just uh, yeah, delete things from database. One thing Airflow managed to is connections. So here we created Aperseed events and Aperseed uh, website uh, connections in Airflow, in the, directly in the, the web interface. And we used a probably suboptimal trick to just use this thing, pass it using the system environment, and so our application that already respects pretty much the 12 factor principle, can just use the, the database uh, connection from the environment and we can just configure it in Airflow. Um, there was a bit of question we had to, to solve. We needed to know where to store the, the, the DAG so we can run locally the same as production. We decided to, to, to put it in directory in our only code base. We have one code base that runs all the different services with different entry points and that's one more entry point. So we built an image, uh, well, not important. Um, it was probably a bit um, complex to set up at first, probably also because uh, we didn't have a lot of experience with that. Uh, we finally found that the Helm charts in the community are not really good, so we found a company called Astronomer that's, uh, that I think they provide um, Airflow as a service, and they built really good quality images, uh, Helm charts, so Helm is a packaging thing for Kubernetes, 
Um, yeah, the, the last thing also is that we had to read a lot of the airflow source because, uh, yeah, probably I will try to contribute a bit to the documentation, but there is a lot of things that lacks in the documentation, so prepare to read code. Uh, which is also true with Bonobo and not with Grafana, which is really well uh, packaged. Uh, so from there, I have about five minutes left. Uh, from there, um, plan N plus one is pretty much the same as plan N, except that it's really easy to lose a lot of time uh, when running this kind of experiment. So. What I, I'd suggest is that, that every experiment you do on business data is, should be time boxed, for example. As you time box, for example, sprints in, uh, in development process, you should time box experiments on data and decide beforehand what are the, the results, the, the numeric results that you actually uh, define as success and define as failure or not success. Um, and saying, yeah, I will measure that in two weeks is important because otherwise you could say, oh, that, that's not yet our objective. Let's wait a bit, let's wait a bit. And probably maybe two years after you're still there. Uh, again, Ash Moria built uh, some simple uh, canvases. Uh, apparently canvases are easy to sell. So they, but that you, you should use something like this uh, to write before on, on the paper. Uh, why you're trying an experiment, what, ex what hypothesis you, you need to, 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 to prove wrong, uh, also what, what kind of mm, line in the sand you're, you're, you're putting down. And, uh, and yeah, so t one week, two weeks, one month after, you can just say, okay, do I, did I validate something? Yes, no, what's the next action? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, um, I would probably move on a bit. Uh, on the tech side, yeah, we have, we want to show in Grafana month-on-month -month data, year-on-year -year data, very important to see the, the movement. Uh, we have a lot of IDs. Uh, we will probably use a, a very complex process. Um, and yeah, just so just to, to finish that. The, um, to, to, to go back to the assembly line analogy, uh, Airflow is really a very good factory manager. I mean, you, 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 you're building a lot of different things. It, it doesn't care about the jobs content. It can help you building dependency between small teams. Uh, and some of your assembly lines could be built with Bonobo, maybe. Once again, make your own research. I'm biased, so I don't want to advise something yet. I can't do. Uh, a lot of the work here is based on very good books, so I need to make uh, advertisement for things I have no interest in, uh, like Site Reliability Engineering, which is the best book ever you can read about uh, managing uh, systems in production. Uh, Lean Analytics, where, where you can find all the schemas for different kind of businesses, like the one uh, I showed at the beginning, and Scaling Lean, which uh, is a uh, book by Ashmoria, where the, the schema of the, the, the different canvases are, are coming from. But if there is one you should read, it's Site Reliability Engineering, and it's free. You can, you can get it from Google directly on the web. Of course, if you're on the paper version, it's paid. Um, I really like feedback, so. I said before, my, uh, I was frightened to send too much information here, so I really, I'd really like to know what you thought about uh, this presentation. So for that, I will provide a link, which is the same link uh, as uh, where you, you'll find all the code example as soon as I can upload them, so probably this afternoon or this evening. Um, and I will announce on Twitter too. And this weekend, Saturday, Sunday, I will announce it again in the sprint announcement session, but uh, there will be a sprint on Bonobo. Uh, if you wanna come, just feel free, it's very open. You don't, you don't need to be expert in anything. You beginners, experts, uh, Pythonistas, non-Pythonistas, everybody is welcome. And even if you don't want to go to Bonobo ETL sprint, you should really consider sprints, which is a really nice way to learn uh, things other sprints, I don't know which one that is this year, but really good thing. Uh, 
all the resources will be available on this link. Uh, you can, uh, I will announce on Twitter as soon as it's updated with the code. And there is a link for feedback, so, uh, so that would be really nice of you if you can just send me a line. That was stupid, that was good, that was, I, I would have added this, or this was hard to understand, I really like this. Um, and yeah, and basically that's it. So thank you very much, and if, I don't know if we have time for questions, but. Thank you very much for this very interesting talk. Um, we have time for a couple of questions, but I also want to remind one thing. If you downloaded the app, there is also a way to rate all the talks. Please do that. Give five, four, three, whatever stars for all the talks. Any questions? Um, hi, Th thank you for the, the talk. Um, so I am wonder about the Airflow deployment. Um, you have been using some, um, what type of executor? So Sorry? executor, executor? Yes. Um, so is it local or salary executor? Um, if you can talk a, a bit about the deployment. Okay, so uh, uh, we used both. Uh, so let's start with my computer. Uh, on my computer, I just went with the local executor, and it's pretty easy to have. It's hard to get the logs because there, there is a, a bit of communication problems. But uh, I so exactly, I built the Docker image with both the Airflow code base based on the Astro number distribution of Airflow, with the upper side code uh, bundled in a different virtual environment, and I just run the Docker image on my computer. Uh, to deploy it to production, the same Docker image is deployed to a Kubernetes cluster, but the configuration is using the Celery executor. So the Celery executor, uh, do, are you familiar with Celery? A bit? <coughs> okay, so Celery has a... Um, um, like manager thing, I don't really know the name, but that runs in the scheduler of Airflow, and that will just uh, handle sending messages and receiving results from the workers. So uh, the, the deployment is, is uh, on our side is made using the Kubernetes um, uh, recipes uh, that we got from Astronomer. Uh, we changed it a bit. I can share that also if you if you, if you need. Um, Mostly the struggle was to understand the architecture. It's, it's, it's why I, I did put the, the Airflow architecture diagram here, because as soon as we really took the time to uh, understand what was uh, happening, uh, everything came in pretty logical. Uh, but as it's a distributed system, uh, just trying to put up thing could uh, create some WTF moments uh, about that. Does that answer your question? Okay, hello, Sec next question that is maybe a little bit related. Um, how do you actually combine Airflow and Bonobo? Because I, I guess both have the like, individual graphs defined. Okay, so uh, actually it was done here. Uh, we actually run another Python process from the workers in uh, in, uh, well, Airflow workers will run Python process that just runs uh, graphs. Uh, again, I'll share this, so probably you, you can just take the text version. But uh, it's, in, in fact, we really use Airflow to manage the execution life cycle of the, of the job, and we really use Bonobo to do the actual work. Uh, that's not the only way you can use Airflow. There is also ways you can pass data from a, one job to another. But the dependency uh, manage, management of Airflow is more um, uh, is, is more gearing towards uh, waiting for things to complete because we know we need a completion before we learn something else. While Bonobo is trying to do uh, as soon as available, let's continue the pipeline. So it, it's more the, uh, the streamline. Uh, Bonobo is more doing data streaming, so both are, are combinable. 
Hi, uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, just a curiosity question, how many machines do you run this on? Uh, exactly three today. Okay, and do you deploy with what, Ansible, Puppet, or something like this, or? It's actually deployed using Kubernetes. Uh, so we have a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, if you know, don't know Kubernetes, it's a bit out of topic, but no. basically you define manifest of your services. Yeah. You just put the manifest on Kubernetes, and the scheduler in, in Kubernetes runs the Docker image you define in your manifest. And, and you deploy Kubernetes by hand? No. No, we use a managed version of Kubernetes on a big okay, whatever. vendor, <laughs> whatever. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much again. Yeah.